I'm Randy Reed, and we're here at Lux Live, and I'm joined by Martin Woolley, the technical program manager for the Bluetooth 6 Special Interest Group. Martin, right. welcome. Great to meet you. Great to be here. So I've been learning a little bit about Bluetooth Mesh, and I understand Bluetooth. Bluetooth is where my phone can talk to one or two items. With Bluetooth Mesh, I might be able to talk to product A, then product A could talk to product B, Product B could talk to product C, but I could probably never reach product C on my own with my Bluetooth. Is that the way it works? Um, it's not far off. Um, I guess first of all, for people listening, Bluetooth Mesh is a completely new Bluetooth technology. So in fact, it's quite different to the Bluetooth they're accustomed to with their phones. So with the Bluetooth on your phone, it's about small collections of devices able to communicate with each other. Bluetooth Mesh was really designed for smart buildings and in particular for lighting systems. So now we're talking about large collections, hundreds and hundreds of devices like lights, switches and sensors, all able to communicate with each other over very large distances as well, because they don't have to be in direct radio range. If one device like a switch sends a message addressed to say a whole collection of lights in a room, if those lights are out of direct range, it's okay because the message will bounce, it'll hop, across the network being relayed from device to device until it reaches its, its destination. And this all happens at the speed of sound as well, so it's very fast. So Bluetooth SIG is a standards organization, is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. So quite critically, Bluetooth is a standard. It's a global standard technology. The Bluetooth SIG are the organization who, who manage that standardization process. And the whole point is that you end up with devices from every other manufacturer all implementing Bluetooth in exactly the same way so they will work together. This is called interoperability. And it means that a consumer can buy a product from one manufacturer and it will work with a, another appropriate product from some completely different manufacturer. And this is just as important in the world of commercial lighting systems, for example, as it is in the world of the consumer. You can buy your components of your lighting system from anywhere and they'll work together and because using of standards. The world, so it's worldwide. Absolutely, it's a global standard that's right. There are currently over 10 million Bluetooth devices that ship every single day. So the numbers are enormous. Last year there were three and a half billion. Bluetooth's been around a long time, but it's absolutely thriving. It's growing at an enormous rate year on year. All right. So let's talk specifically about lighting. Okay. What kind of range will we have with Bluetooth Mesh? Well, you'll be able to cover entire buildings and in fact entire collections of buildings because again, the way a mesh network works, you're not constrained by direct radio range. Now, in terms of the range between devices in terms of radio, you're talking hundreds of meters anyway. Bluetooth actually has a very, very powerful radio in it these days, very energy efficient, and yet it's able to reach a range of hundreds of meters. Put that in the context of a mesh though, and again, messages will get relayed, therefore they can go much, much further than the, um, the normal restriction that radio itself would, would place on range. You can do up to 127 hops across the network, and if each of those hops was, say, 100 meters, you're over a kilometer. When we talk about Bluetooth mesh, originally, lighting was one of the key applications it was designed for, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I was in the room for the very first set of two-day workshops, which we held in Cambridge, right at the end of 2014, and right from the very start, lighting dominated the discussion. Okay, so Bluetooth mesh is available today? Yes, it is. The specification from which manufacturers implement their products was released in the summer. There are already products appearing in our database of uh, certified products appearing. So uh, when I'm developing my fixture, will I need to have an antenna outside of it? Um, not necessarily outside, but for radio communications, yes, an antenna would be a part of the design. But consider your smartphone. It has probably multiple antenna in it, but you can't see them. They're in okay. there somewhere. So we can do the same thing with light fixtures? Absolutely, yep. Okay. What are some of the roadblocks you see to this being implemented? The simple um, you know, fact that we have to make a whole new market aware. We're, we're new to the world of lighting. You know, Bluetooth is not associated with lighting traditionally, so we need to make people aware. It's why we're at places like the, uh, the Lux Live event here in London today to help raise that okay. awareness. And, and this is where it's kind of being introduced, am I correct? To a point, yes. We've spoken right. at um, a few other events this year, but... But not lighting. Uh, one other only, so, oh, that I know of so far. I've been to one other, yeah, so. But again, it was designed for lighting, so we're, okay. we're quietly confident that it's a good fit with the requirements. What will some other uses be other than lighting? Well, I think the broader use case is, is the smart building. So smart buildings leverage 
data from sensors, they have lots of automation in them, and they have objectives. So the reason we have automation in buildings is often to do with cost, sometimes it's to do with the environment and energy efficiency, sometimes it's to do with increasing security or improving working conditions. But they're our goals, and to achieve the right type and level of smartness in a building, you need to collect data from lots of sensors, wireless sensors in our case, and use that data to drive automated processes and systems in the building. So lighting is a very specific thing, smart building is a broader use case. Beyond that, we expect to see it used in some industrial scenarios as well. Right. And things like acid tracking actually as well. So I understand about the standard, and let's say that I'm a lighting manufacturer and yeah. I do want to implement this in a couple of jobs. Yeah. I would buy my Bluetooth radio from somewhere? Yeah, you probably would. Um, Typically we call the, the companies that make the chips and the software that goes with them, uh, we call those modules. Okay. And so you'll acquire a Bluetooth module from a module vendor and okay. that will be integrated within your product. You'll integrate it in the hardware, plug it in into the circuit okay. board in an appropriate way. There may be some software work to do, but that's how you put it in your product. Okay. Now if your job is simply to design and commission lighting systems, you won't do any of those things. You'll be acquiring ready-made, um, Bluetooth okay. mesh ready, Okay. Lighting products from, and again, a, from a manufacturer. Bluetooth ready products are available everywhere. Bluetooth mesh modules, are those readily available today? Um, there are some, yes. It's quite new still, so there's always a delay between the specification being finished, manufacturers picking that up and starting to implement their products to it. So early days yet, but we are beginning okay. to see products in our database already. Uh, one of the reasons, if I, I may, that's actually Please. quite fast. It's an unusual that um, we're starting to see real things in the, um, the product database as quickly as this, and it's because there was so much interest in this subject. Right. We actually had 120 companies, all of whom are members of the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, working on the Bluetooth Mesh specification. That's a lot more than usual. So any company that's been working on the specification with us, of course, is ahead of the game. Sure. You know, they're, they're already implementing six months ago. And I would assume yeah. a lot of these module manufacturers would be in the UK. Because... Uh, all over the world, actually. Uh, all over the world. Lots in okay. Europe, lots in the States, lots in um, Asia as well, places like China. Okay. So what else could you do with the Bluetooth mesh network outside of lighting in a building? That's a really good question, actually. I'm really excited about this because there's a, a vision, if you like, that lighting forms a natural connectivity grid. And if we look around us here, there are so many lights arranged in the grid, they're permanently powered. Now, if those lights are smart lights with a Bluetooth mesh communications capability inside them, they're smart because of software. There's software running on them. They're basically small networked computers. Now, in the first instance, that software will be there to control the lights, to respond to sensors and switches and that kind of thing. But there is no reason why you couldn't run multiple pieces of software on those lights that do entirely different things. Such as? Such as they could track uh, where people are and know who they are and dynamically adjust lighting, say in the retail context, to um, adapt to the parts of the store that people are in. Or, or maybe the parts of the store where they're not and we want them to go to because we want to sell some things. So you can do... Um, Tracking of people and objects, objects that would be asset tracking. You could have um, indoor navigation facilities, so wayfinding in very large buildings, complicated places like airports. So you could do all sorts of things. Your lighting system becomes really IT infrastructure. It's a platform okay. to run applications off that happens also to be lights. Okay, last question. Yeah. Five years from now, yeah. where will we see Bluetooth mesh? Um, I think you'll see it pretty well established in the world of smart buildings, especially commercial buildings. I think it'll make some penetration into the world of the smart homes, that's the, the residential sector, you'll see it there as well. Because it's on smartphones as well, don't forget, and the technology on your smartphone is compatible with Bluetooth mesh. So you already have that okay. possibility to have applications that let you control and monitor your, your home systems in your pocket today. So that alone, I think, will catapult Bluetooth mesh into the residential sector. You'll see it, I think, adopted quite um, substantially in the commercial building sector, and it'll start to make inroads into the world of industry as well. Okay, Martin, thank you very much. You're very I'm, welcome. I'm excited about what you've got here. Fantastic, I am so, too. Thank you for your questions. All right, thank okay. you. Okay.